Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Born Political. Uh, again, I have a guest tonight that it's, it's kind of sort of related to baseball. Uh, if you guys notice a, a reoccurring theme, uh, it's, it's called Born Political, and I've had a lot of political guests on there, but I've met a lot of folks through my coaching years. Uh, tonight's guest is no different. Uh, somebody that I met when, when he was a teenager, the 13 to 15 year old division in baseball. Uh, and the one thing I always remember about him is his smile. It's gigantic. <laughs> Uh, it hasn't changed. It's still the same. Uh, and we do lose touch, but, you know, Facebook, unfortunately, keeps us uh, track with each other. Even though he lives in town, uh, sometimes you, you, you don't see people enough. Uh, but he's going on to do some pretty cool things, and he's working on something right now that we wanted to talk about. Uh, but this is Born Political, and we're going to get to know who he is first, and we're going to work on uh, our way up from where he started to where he is. Mike Morton, welcome to the show. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, I love it, man. And and this kind of got spurred because I saw an interview. We're, we're going to get to what you're doing uh, <laughs> later on in the show, but I saw him on an interview, NBC Connecticut. Uh, but, you know, Mike, Born Political to me is a show I started. So, you know, no matter what someone's doing in the community, mm -hmm. I wanted to put them out there where people could understand where they came from. Right. Maybe why they're doing what they're doing or how they're helping the town or how they're helping the community. And, and it starts to me with, you know, where, where were you born and, you know, where you came from and what your parents are like. So we're going to do a little bit of that about okay, you and okay. who you are, and we're going to work into what we're doing. So <laughs> where were you born? You're um, local? I am local. I was born <clears throat> actually in New London at L&M. All right. Um, obviously, I'm 33 years old. Um, 33. My parents, mom and dad, still around. Um, are they New London people? They are. Uh, my dad is not. My mom is. Yep. Um, yep. My dad's actually from South Carolina. Okay. Um, so I've moved here. You know, it's pretty much basic, you know, the, the journey of life growing up, you pretty know, much. getting to know different people around town. So in, your, in, in the political scheme of things, I always talk about, you know, what, what your house was like. And you have brothers and sisters? I have uh, one brother and one sister. That's exactly me. <laughs> Where are you at in the family? I'm the baby. You're the baby. I'm the baby. The cry baby or just the no, baby? No, just, just the baby. Just, just the, the baby. So that's why you, just, you still got that smile. So when I, when I introduced you, man, that's all I always remember about you playing. Um, and, you know, being the, every, your position in the family is big to me because I was the middle. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like a lot of my political, my awareness yeah. came from keeping my brother from, like, trying to make my sister cry to make, for whatever reason. Right. Or, you know, and you find yourself in the middle of these things, and your brother was always just old enough to whoop you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and my sister was young enough where, you know, she was five or six years younger than me. It's like, you know, there was more of a uncle or, right. you know, that relationship. Yeah. So, but I think a lot of that was for me. So for you being the youngest, how, how was this, what was the age separation? Are you? Um, so we're each two years apart from each other. Oh, so Obviously, that's me like... being the baby, I'm four from my older brother. Um, so it was my brother, my sister, and me. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, obviously, I still get the, you know, I can still take you down, even though you're bigger than me. Oh, your um, older brother still? Yeah, he still has that mentality. He can still take me down. But now, now he has to watch because now he's getting to the edge of being old. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> when that is true. When you're young, man, yeah. it, it works out. But now, you know, you start getting, he's getting close to 40. You start thinking about your knees mm -hmm. and all those other things that can go wrong. Right. So, so you went to school. Uh, where'd you go to school? And you started in New London, you said? Yep. I, so I started at um, Nathan, not Nathan Hale, uh, Jennings. Yep. And then I went over to Winthrop. My then, alma mater. Yeah. And then I came over to uh, Eastern Point. Um, and then I went to Westside and then Fitch. Yep. Would, would you see a big difference between Groton and New London in the move? Do you remember it? Or would, I don't remember it at all, um, to be quite honest. Yep. I know there was a lot of move, um, but. To be honest, remember, I don't remember much about it. No. Yeah. And then you went to, did you go to Fitch Middle when you got here? No, I went to Westside. Oh, Westside. Yep. I was Which a, is a humble. Have you been yeah, to that school? I have. Yep, I played basketball there on Tuesdays. You do? Yep. So I used to do that, too. And I don't know, I don't know if I'd be able to make it. No. No. I, <laughs> if we guys start playing half court, maybe I'll come yeah. back up. <laughs> so Tuesday nights, that's, that's always, that's the same night. That's what I used yep. to play. And uh, yeah, is there some good games down there. You guys still get. A lot oh of yeah, people? we still we still play. You know, um, probably now that it's closed with school being closed. Yeah. Um, now we transfer to outside until October. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then you know we still hang. We still talk to each other um, outside of basketball. You know, it's a good group of people that we went to school with. Obviously, you know, a lot of people still don't know about those things. Right. They're important. And you see, we get a lot of things flushed out here on, mm -hmm. on Born Political, like all the local stuff that matters. Right. So so uh, then you went to Fitch. Yep. And you were you were in school with my son Joey, right? And, yep. Ka and Kayla. Yes, so both you, of them. Yes. Yep, yep. And then, uh, 
so your baseball career, did you, did you play in high school at all? Did I did play? not. I played uh, basketball and football. Basketball and football in yep. high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Fitch, and so I had Thurman on last week, so you got to, well, you didn't know him. He no. wasn't there when you were there. Yeah. But you guys have always had, Fitch has always had great fields. Right. Baseball, and, and, and the gymnasium's good. Mm -hmm. So we always have, you know, it's a solid school. You feel right, like exactly. Right, place. right, that's actually where my stepdaughter goes now, it's Fitch. Oh, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't it cool? Don't you, don't you get old quick? <laughs> it feels like a lifetime, but it, you in the blink of an eye, you dare. And your stepdaughter, do you have other children? I have uh, two boys and two girls. Two boys and two girls. Yep. So my youngest, my oldest son is going to Grosso Tech next year, or this year. Wow. Um, and then my daughter is eight, and my youngest son is three. Wow. Yeah. Grosso Tech. And, and we, we do a lot of work up there. Mm -hmm. Community Speaks Out, the group that I work with. But uh, what a tremendous school that is, too. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to attend that school, but... I've yeah, heard, you I haven't heard. been inside of it yet? I haven't been, I've been inside of it, no. Yeah, so I got to tour it a couple times when they were building it, and then to see it now where it is and the, and the programs that they're doing, mm -hmm. it's amazing. So yeah. he's going to be very lucky to, to go to that <laughs> school. Well, I mean, I, I have a nephew that's up there now and the one that graduated already. So Okay, nice. Yeah. You, you'll get to see it. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll like it. Hoping. <laughs> so then, so <clears throat> you graduate high school. We kind of lost touch after baseball because, you know, I get busy, you get busy. Right. I sell you around town here and there, but mm -hmm. what, what were you doing? Where'd you, where'd you go right after high school? What'd you do? Um, right after high school, I stayed local. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, you know, worked a couple jobs. And then yeah. I ended up starting my own landscaping business. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, three years ago. Um, but now that I had to close that, um, due to pursuing other careers within, yeah. like, I uh, wanted to yeah. do, uh, become a police officer. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, so, so in, in that pursuit, I know, uh, you know, obviously we're in a, talking about politics. Right. Uh, it's been a tough ride. Yes. I think there's a lot of people that don't want to get into that trade now or, or get into that service. Um, it's, to me, it's, 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 it's important that people like you right. get involved. Yep. Um, when I say like you, it's the smile. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, it's the people connection. It's the, wanting to serve the community part of it. And I think we're seeing more and more that that's, even the police departments, that they're, they're looking, you know, you gotta have a mix of people. Right. No job is complete if everyone's the same. Right, exactly. And, and I, I think you would round it out and thinking hopefully maybe school resource officer or, Something, yeah. I'm, already, I'm already planning your career for you. <laughs> uh, but just from, from my perspective, from the outside looking in, I think that you'd fit the bill in a lot of different ways. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, and and hopefully you maybe you land over in New London or something. Yeah, maybe That's hopefully a little bit of home time, we'll home see. cooking there. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and, and right now we're, we're you know again I like I said I saw you on 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 the NBC Connecticut mm -hmm. because uh, you know so you 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 do all this stuff you are where you are you have these you have four four children and one day you say you know I think I'm gonna ride a bicycle yes or. or was it the bicycle or was it the event? What brought you, what drew you to this? So funny question. So I actually got hurt at work and I went to Pequot um, and I was sitting in the room waiting for the doctor to come in because I had hurt my head at work. Yeah. Um, and then across the, the computer screen that's in the room, I seen closer to free. Um, so I actually went on my phone while I was waiting and looked it up and it says research for cancer, you know. So right there, boom, obviously everybody, somebody in, in the family has dealt with cancer, have yep. lost Family members to cancer. Me, I've lost quite a few to cancer. Okay. So if, to me, it was a no-brainer. Like, listen, for me to ride a bike to raise funds for cancer, I can do that. Wow. And it's, it's so random how things happen because we, you know, me being part of a, a group, Community Speaks Out, we always say, well, well, let's not print anything. No one ever looks at flyers or no one looks at this. Or, right. You know, you gotta, we're, we're trying to figure out new and innovative ways to get to people, to, to share with them what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And here's a guy that pumped his head. <laughs> he going to a hospital, and, and happened to look over someone's shoulder at a computer, or you just saw it up. Or? No, yeah, I was literally just sitting waiting for the doctor to walk in, and then I was looking at the computer screen, and as the things go by, and it's just say close to free, cancer research, fundraiser, this and that, and I looked it up on my phone while I was waiting for the doctor to come in, reading all about it, and it's just like, this is something that I can do. Like, I I feel comfortable doing. And it'll make me feel good about myself to so the, give. So then getting involved, it sounds like everyone asks how they can get involved and how they can do things, how they can be part of stuff. You literally Googled it. Yes. And then, and then made a phone call of, of what you could do, or, you, or they just had nope. events set up. Um, so basically what you do is you Google mm -hmm. it, closer to free .com, Um 
I clicked on the page, the home wave, and it says, if you want to register to ride, you can volunteer. Yeah. Um, and I clicked to register to ride. Um, did, so did you have a bike at this point? I did not. Actually, I did. I had a mountain bike. I had a GT oh, mountain did. bike. Okay. But it has the fat tires on it. So I was like, I don't think I can ride this yep, yep. On, on the road like that. So I actually, my wife helped me look for a road bike on, on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, yeah. And I found one, I think, a couple months before the ride happened. Um, my first ride, which obviously was during COVID. Yep. Um, so it was actually virtual. So I did 25 miles on my first ride. And yep. then last year I did 65. And then this year again, I'm doing 65 again. So my, 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 my bike story is my, my friend got into, into bicycling pretty much where you are now. Mm -hmm. And he called myself and another friend up and wanted to take this trip to up by Killingly. Okay. From New London. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I borrowed a bicycle from my high school friend, yeah. Walt High Slope. He had, he, I remember he had one. And my other buddy borrowed a bike from somebody else. And he shows up and he has the shorts and the pad and mm. all that other stuff. And I was like, you know how you look ridiculous. <laughs> like, what are you wearing? Just put shorts on. Stop. But, so we get on our bike and I, I bicycled from here to Killingly with no practice. Yeah. And never been, not haven't been on a bike in a while. Mm -hmm. And we had the tent. So we went up to set up the tent, and when I went to go sit back down on the bike, oh yeah, it was That's... really apparent why people wear padded shorts and the proper exactly. equipment. Exactly, because I could barely sit on the seat. Yep, and made it only halfway home the next day, and had a flat tire, mm. and ended up hitchhiking and threw my bike in the back <laughs> of someone's car. That's my biking story. Yeah, oh, uh, it's never gone any further than that. I never did it again. Oh, <laughs> uh, but maybe you'll inspire me to be part of this. So, so closer to free is a it's an organization that obviously was started to support. Folks with cancer, what happens with the money? They get the money, and then what do they do with it? So last year we raised three point one million dollars. Three point one million dollars. Yes. You say that so lightly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big achievement. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So they had uh, we had mm. over two thousand in person and over five hundred in virtual, um, okay. and it's all around the country. Yep. Um, so basically, what we do is we ride bikes. Um, and then we raise funds throughout, starts in March, and it goes to the end of September that we can raise our funds. Okay. The bike ride is on September 9th, which is a Saturday. So we still have time. We yes, can... yes, we still have time. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I go to my Facebook page after this. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're out there watching, you can do the same. Mike Morton, you see his name up there, just Facebook him. Uh, all that information will be up there. And so for, for me uh, to understand what you're doing, you, you're basically on the 9th. What happens? So, like, you've already, you've raised all your money and people have supported you. Mm -hmm. Now, now it's your turn to do your job. Right. W what does September 9th look like for you? September 9th is <clears throat> amazing. Okay. Uh, last year was my first in person to visualize what actually happens. Yeah. Um, at a ride, and to tell you, it's like another family. To be quite honest. Okay. People you don't even know. Yeah. But what they're there for and what you're there for, it's the same cause. thing. Yeah. And then the opening ceremony. Um, you see kids that have cancer, that have beat cancer. Wow. And you see just a bunch of people that come together for this bike ride. Okay. It's just something that I never would have experienced if I didn't take on, to, if I didn't even see that, yep. the flyer go across the screen at the doctor's office. Now, now, will you have a group of people that see you off? or how, or how? You, you? I know it's, it's probably something where you at least need to, to have your car and then someone meet you after, or do you drive back to your car? No, so bike? last year, <clears throat> I, we actually got a hotel about 14. Oh, so this is an overnight thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to go oh, the, okay. night, the night before. <laughs> All right. So I, we actually got a hotel 14 miles from the Yobo where it starts at. Okay. So I literally, so I left the hotel. I rode my bike to the Yobo because obviously I brought the kids and the wife and the yep. kids still sleep. And I had to leave there by 7 o'clock in the morning to get to the Yobo okay. by race time or well, ride time. Um, so basically, I get there the night before, I ride my bike to there, and, you know, they have the bagels, you know, food for you to eat before you ride, because yep. you can't, obviously can't ride on an empty stomach. I can't do anything on an empty yeah. stomach. <laughs> I can't sleep on an empty stomach. Right, and yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, ride days, you know, the 100-mile guys go first, and then this just trickles down the line for how many miles you want to ride. I yep. mean, during mid-ride, if you want to change your mind to ride a shorter route, you're more than welcome to do so. Now do you GPS your, are you, you have GPS or is this well marked? This is well marked, uh, volunteers all throughout New Haven. Um, yep. well, obviously starts in New Haven and then like there's uh, bicycle guys that ride like the motorcycles um, that cut off traffic for you to go. So they have volunteers all spread out up to Osebrook, 
spread out to show you where to go. Now, if, you, if you're someone that actually has a bicycle and has experience or, or no experience, I got because what's the shortest ride you could do? If you if you just wanted to say, hey, you know what, I want to get involved. What what is that? What's that? Uh, the shortest route is ten miles. Okay, so still outside my zone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it depends. I could, actually, I could probably walk. I could, pro I could probably do 10 miles on a bicycle, I think. I mean, and, and if you do, if you I, can't do the 10 miles, they, ha they give you a bracelet for a number to call, um, and then they have a vehicle that will come pick you up and bring you back. To, so that to same thing happens. If, so say, say you break down. Can you fix your bike on the side of the road? Are you there? They have rest stops, uh, brake stops in the routes. Um, so they have well-trained mechanics for bikes. If something needs to be fixed right there on the spot, you get it fixed. I don't know if they'll come out to you and fix the bike. Uh, but if you want to, you can pick you up, and then they'll bring you to the, the rest stop where to see if the bike mechanic can fix it. So th this is a well-oiled machine. Oh this, yes, very this isn't well. this isn't something Joe Dela Cruz put together no. last weekend. This is uh, gonna, so it sounds from the Yale Bowl. I'm just trying to give. I'm just trying to uh, paint a picture of it. So if somebody wanted to go, mm -hmm. like where's the best place and time? That if, say if somebody's watching this right now and said, you know what. I never went, it sounded awesome. Where do I go? Where can I be most effective? Or where can I see the most action? Um, I would say probably at the starting line. <laughs> to be quite honest, you see everything. Everybody that's riding, um, you know, it gets really loud from everybody cheering you on to keep going and going. Um, but I mean, they have on the website, they have places to where you can stop and cheer um, throughout the routes. Oh, so, if, so you don't have to go all the way to the Yale. Exactly, Bowl you, can, you can, can stop. They have places where throughout to stop and then to chair and stuff like that. And this place, I'm sure that probably at the, does it and it ends at the elbow. Also? Yep. So it's a big circle, pretty much. It's a big loop. Um, so it starts at the elbow and then ends at the elbow. And, and what, what's your loop? You, you, we talked about this off air quickly. Yeah. But how many miles are you gonna do? I'm doing 65 miles. So my loop starts back up by Guilford. So by Guilford. So you, you're gonna come over. Well, I say salt and salt bridge. Hopefully, you don't end up on the highway on your, on your bicycle. That's probably not part of the route. I'm yeah, guessing. no, we do go over the highway, um, the route to 65, and then um, the rest stop in Guilford is on the Guilford Green. Yeah. So that's where the last rest stop is for the 65 miles. And we talked about this off air because I think a lot of people will come to me and ask me, God, you see so busy. I see you up, you're always doing something with Community Speaks Out, or you're doing, and I think it gives them hesitancy about getting involved at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and what I tell them is if, if you get involved and it's something that's fulfilling you for whatever reason, right. uh, it's not going to seem like a chore. And it doesn't for me for Community Speaks Out and speaking with you about this, it's, it's just oh, yeah, it's, like you light up. Yeah, it's like something it's, that I feel 100% I impact something or somebody that I'm helping. Yeah. It may not be even be my family, somebody else's family that needs help. I know my funds that I've raised so far is going to somebody in need. Yeah, and it's just, it's just a no-brainer for me to even think about. Is it. like to ride a bike 65 miles for somebody who's beating cancer. Their pain is nothing compared to what I'm riding. Yeah, to be so. Last year, I gave you last year. I wanted to quit in the middle of the race ride. I called my wife. I said, "Hey, come get me." As I'm riding past a person holding up a sign that says, "I've been 11 years cancer-free because of what you do." Oh, okay. Instant. I'm finishing this. Change your mind. Instantly changed. How many mind. miles did you last year? Sixty-five. Also, oh, it's the same. Yep, same amount. All right, so you know you can do it. But exactly. You know, but there's gonna be a little bit of pain involved. Yeah, it's, there's definitely gonna be pain. Um, yeah. But my mindset from last year is completely different. Yep. Um, so for me, I know exactly what I'm doing it for. Yeah. And what my meaning behind the ride is. So for me, I if I want to quit, quitting is not even in my mindset. My mindset is to start and finish okay for the reason that i am helping somebody beat something that and, and everyone has like you said everyone's been affected by cancer we we've lost my best friend the, the guy that i talked about uh that that challenged me to get on a bicycle mm -hmm. and ride whatever how i think it was, it was like 60 miles yeah to killingly it, it was far yeah yeah um but he challenged me and i did it um and this guy was a healthy guy played football for new london uh was was one of the stars, the captain of the team, great athlete. Yeah. Um, he got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma mm. when he was 19. Wow. And passed away when he was 20. Wow. So, and he was my best friend. So there was there was a connection to cancer there that I, you know, I, you know, I think when you're very young, mm -hmm. you you just don't feel like, 
you know, only old people die of cancer or right. And then be in a position at your end to see the the age groups that it affects. Right. And knowing that there's, you know, and then of course we all reflect when we look at our, you know, obviously I think it was your aunt that that mm-hmm. you were very close to that had cancer and you. Yeah. So she actually <clears throat> beat cancer, um, but she actually died from heart failure. Wow. So I know for me that the fact that there is hope. Yep. To get to where we need to be to beat this cancer. Yep. Um, we just got to find it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, and it's going to take, it takes a tremendous amount of money. Everyone says, you know, what are we going to do when they, when they cure cancer? I say, we're gonna, we'll ride for something else. Exactly, there you Let's, go. <laughs> you know what, there's not going to be things to, there's always going to be something yeah. where we can help each other out. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and, and we're getting close. And, mm-hmm. and the, it happens because people like you yeah. and groups like this. Uh, I don't. I think. I don't think you can really. You can't quantify it when you're one person doing something. Right. But I think. I think what you really see is when you see the group and the people get exactly. together. Exactly. Riding into the Yobo to see how many cars are lined up to get in to ride. Yeah. It's just mind blowing. People from different states coming to Connecticut to ride for cancer. Yeah. It's just to see how many people. How many people is touched and how many people have signed up for this. It's just like it's not thinkable for me just to. So ride. it is nationwide, but there's not a, a path in every state. Right. People do travel to Connecticut to. Yes. Because they're one of the. What is it? Regional or do they? Is that how the? Is that how it's picked out or? I mean, I don't know how it's picked out. Yeah. I know they have people in Brazil, Paris, and stuff like that riding. Oh, they do. Yeah, it's all. It's. Oh, na- so this is this is na- this uh, is. Uh, yeah, it's global. It's global. all over the place. Yep. Wow. You know, it's one of those things. That, and, and I always wish that, especially with, with the addiction part that that brought me into into the world of Community Speaks Out, mm-hmm. that people learned about stuff before it, hit, it came to their shores. I was just as right. guilty. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, the addiction. You know, I had it in my family. I had cousins and stuff. But when it really hits you, mm-hmm. um, and I think when we, when we wait that long to right. address something... It's not good when it hits your house in your inside your your home exactly with yourself or your or family member that's close. Uh, sometimes that's too late, and, and I ask people to get out there before, mm-hmm. get in front of it, and you're doing something that's proactive and it feels yes. right. Yes, feels one one hundred percent wonderful to me. I'm so grateful that I found this, yeah, and that I could be a part of this team family. Yep. Any any uh, future partners there? You got, you, your kids are getting older. Have they, I'm, have I'm they hoping. said? Have they, I, I mean, 65 miles is, is long. Yes, it took me seven hours last year to ride 65 miles. But I'm hoping somewhere down the line that I can form a team together to all of us can ride together and then yep. do this so everybody can. I want, I want, what I want is everybody to experience the experience of riding for closer to free. Yep. I mean, it may not seem like a lot to us for riding, but it means a lifetime to somebody else that's over at Smile or Yale that's fighting this battle. And something that started for you with a with a, a a phone Google search exactly has turned into what this is, and and this is one charity of so many that mm-hmm. you can get involved with, and you know when I when I again I I think there's a lot of people out there that are lost. Yep. You know, especially we went through the whole COVID thing. There was a lot of isolation. One hundred percent. A lot of people didn't see each other, and to get back into the swing of things, you know, people are trying to fill their lives with sometimes work or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and trying to get ahead or pay a bill or do this, but there's there's a lot of importance of getting your mind right. Right. And it's amazing what even if you even if it's donating at the people that I know that that walked into the the the, the uh, homeless center mm-hmm. and started volunteering, their lives have changed. Exactly. And yeah. they're there once or twice a week, and they're doing these little things that help. Uh, and it, it becomes less about the people you're helping and more about you. Exactly. Yep. I've <laughs> definitely changed taking on doing this. Closer to free ride, I see life in a whole different life experience, to be quite honest. Me, I was, you know, just doing whatever I wanted to, you know, yep. this and that. But now that I'm in in this group or this community, I feel different about myself and how I see outside people who deal with this or who are, hey, they have beat it, but then are going back because it came back. Yeah. So my whole life experience has definitely changed more wiser now that I know about what this group is about, yep. what the event's about, and what goes into planning and zoning and this and that for this event to even happen, you think you think this this uh, this newfound uh, love and passion you think does that have anything to do with your career choice? Like, did you always want to be a police officer, or is this something that's recent and kind of? So no, I've wanted to be a police officer since middle school. 
That's, oh, you did. That's been my okay. my dream job. Is well, to let's be let's Kai. get <laughs> who's watching the show that I know that needs a, a, a good uh, police officer in town because I oh I, I love to hear that and I didn't know so but now you, now maybe the bike ride and got you rekindled because there's been time because you could have applied any at any time. Probably. Oh, exactly. Yes. Um, and now I'm just I'm really happy that you're doing it. Thank I think you. I think again I'm I'm not. I'm not joking when I tell you how much I think that you're the exact personality that we need. I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> you know, some, someone that's doing the work that you're doing already. Right. Um, and it would be fun. The, the only problem is they'll probably have you working it the next time the race yeah. comes up. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be somewhere directed <laughs> traffic or something. Yeah. No, I'm definitely in the for the long haul, um, 100%. As long as this goes on, this is going into the 13th year. Um, but this is my third year riding. Um, and I've said it before on NBC Connecticut, I'll say it again, I'm in this 100% until the wheels fall off. The wheels fall off. Yeah. <laughs> that can happen fast. Yeah, man, you know. But you know what, with electric technology, <laughs> you know, I, was, I was just thinking, I probably could do the 65 miles because we actually have an electric bike at yeah. my house. <laughs> <laughs> we went. We went to Pedago. Down there. There's my shameless plug for my. But it's it's a it's a grotten business. Yep. And Tammy got a bike because she wanted to you know uh, start getting active and but right. wanted you know wanted to be able to see all the grotten and not just do our neighborhood. Right. And that, and you know we got the hill in both directions. Oh, right? yeah. No matter where you go. So uh, she has that, and I actually. I think I might be able to beat your time. This thing does like 20 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, I don't go that fast, I don't think. Maybe no. downhill, but uphill, it's definitely a struggle. But I've maintained my composure and I fight through the pain. Yep, yep. So, I mean, I, I, we're connected in a bunch of different ways. I didn't realize that you worked at J-Pro right now. Yep. And, uh, and I actually just picked up some part of coal. We, <laughs> it's, it's amazing to me the inter how interconnected everyone is in this area. Right. And I probably just missed you that morning by not seeing you or whatever, but mm -hmm. I was picking up and I was right on the outside edge and probably didn't see you. No. Yeah, I probably had a delivery <clears throat> or something. I pulled up. I, had, I, I actually interviewed the guy from the, the Purple Heart Foundation. Okay. And I had a jacket when I dropped the stuff off last week. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the guy says, I, I'm in that group. <laughs> and it, it's, you know, they basically, they raise money and they, they, and they help fund people that, that have earned a Purple Heart. And, and basically, they'll put a roof on their house. So right. They'll, but those are the type of things. There's so many things you can get involved in. Mike, I told you this was going to be fast. Yes. Right? Yes. I didn't, did I lie? You did not lie. I did not lie. Just like lie. in baseball, when I told you I was the greatest coach yeah. ever, right? I didn't lie then either. Did not um, lie. I, I might have been one of the happiest coaches. <laughs> I'm not the best coach. We all know that. Uh, but we're, we're run out of time here. Um, and, and you know what? Maybe uh, after September, when you're, when you're healing, yes. uh, I can get you back and we'll talk about this experience and, and how each year probably has changed a little bit, especially it sounds like your perspective is even a little different this year. Yes, uh, yes. So we'll, we'll bring you back on the show. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy that you could make it on the show tonight. I, I, I enjoyed this whole half hour. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about my ride. Oh, no. And, and we're going to talk again after. So, guys, uh, this is this week's edition. Uh, next week, we have the fundraiser for SEC TV. Or oh, not fundraiser. It's the annual show. Uh, a lot of local, local artists will be posting and having, having artwork here in studio. So if you want to come by uh, and get interviewed by me, I will be, be here from 530 to 630. Uh, please come on down. There's going to be a band. There'll be some light hors d'oeuvres and food. Uh, and hopefully we see you then. Uh, Till next week, guys, take it easy. Born Political, we'll see you next week.